This is YSM Sports Media. I want to thank you for all your love and support. Really appreciate it. We wouldn't be able to do this without you. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button right now and click the notification button for all future content. Cedric Wyckoff. What's good, Cedric? What's good with you? Oh, man. What you had going on today? Oh, man, we got some rounds in the fall. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's a crazy workout, man. You know, Philly got different fighters, man. They really aggressive. They really know their stuff. So uh, I had a good time today. It was, you know, a full experience. Where are you from? I'm from Detroit. You're from Detroit? Uh, yeah. You Are you a crunk gym guy? Or? Yeah. Yep, crunk. Okay. You know, my, uh, my uncle Jimmy Paul, is, uh, he's an IBF world champion. And, um, I kind of grew up in Crump, you know what I'm saying, when it was in the basement to where, where it's at now, you know what I'm saying? But they pretty much closed now. Alright, uh, Jimmy Paul, was he trained by um, Emmanuel, Emmanuel Stewart? Stewart? Yeah. Okay. yeah. So basically, do, do you have like the typical Emmanuel Stewart style jab first, ask yeah. questions later? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, Emmanuel, my guy, man. Shit, I repeat Emmanuel. My guy. Now, uh, coming from such a uh, historical lineage as far as boxing wise, do you feel like it's added pressure on you to succeed? Um, not really, you know what I'm saying? Because I was born into it. You know, my uncle, uh, well, people don't know, like, I was always getting in trouble, you know, fighting in school. So my uncle was like, when you get kicked out of school for fighting, you might as well get paid for it. So he brought me to the gym at like eight years old, and I stayed around it. So it's not hard, man. You know, it, it pretty much got to be in you. So I've been around it my whole life. I'm used to it. So. Now, what kind of work do you get at at Croc Gym? Like, who have you sparred? Uh, I sparred guys like Johnny Austin, Antonio Wade. Uh, um, have you sparred Tony Harrison yet? No, not yet. Not yet. It's coming though. You know what I'm saying? He, uh, you know, he's been dealing with the community. You know what I'm saying? And as well as dealing with the passing of his father, you know, R.P. to Ali. You know, Tony been busy a whole lot, so I ain't really had time to get in touch with him, you know. Uh, and I'm sure it'll come around. And I'm ready. Okay. Now, you're 2-0, right? Yep. Uh, you just signed a management deal with uh, Rick Ross. Yes, How did that come about? Uh, well, Rick discovered me through my uncle. You know what I'm saying? My uncle. And we had got tired of, like, little promotion issues in the city. And I never could get a shot. You know what I'm saying? And, um, for some reason, when I didn't sign a contract right away, the promoter pretty much got a little antsy. You know what I'm saying? He got a little crazy and started, like, writing me off. And then, like, you know, pretty much just doing me any kind of way. No disrespect to him, but it's just, you know, how the game is. Like, if you don't sign right then and there, they pretty much, like, you know, think you disrespect him. So I just took my time and, you feel me, I just waited for the right person. And then Rick was the right person. He came along. And uh, he, you know, took a chance on me. So my uncle pretty much reached out to Rick, or Rick reached out to my uncle, and that's how we linked up. Okay. But as far as promotional goes, you're a free agent. Yeah. I'm, free. Okay. No, I'm signed with Rick, though. Yeah, you yeah. signed. Is it an advisory deal or is it a management deal? Uh, I'm not really sure. I'm not really sure. But, right. So, um, you signed with Rick. Um, he's up and coming, and he sends you to Philly for good work. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, uh, before today, when was the last time that you sparred? Uh, I had sparred like a month ago because I was I was in the gym with you know a lot of guys who sparring and, you know whatever, and like the COVID was really spiking up in the gym, mm. and like one of the guys I was sparring with, uh, he had called me one day and told me he can't smell the taste nothing. So I was oh, like, man, sure. you know, you probably got it, you yeah. know what I'm saying? But I ain't speaking into existence. I just kept my distance. So I ain't sparring like a month. I just stayed away from the gym. How much did COVID affect you? Because I know normally your first year out, you want five, six fights. Yeah. You only had two. How much did it affect your first year, or how do you wanted it to go? I mean, really, you know, everything was kind of mental. I, I just got tired of, like, you know, fights getting canceled on me before COVID. And then when it happened, it was just like, it was nothing I could really do. So, um... It was a little discouraging, but I just stayed focused. I stayed in the gym. I changed my diet up, you know. I um, pretty much just stayed training because anything could have came up. Mm. So, uh, most definitely it did, you know, impact me in a way, but I ain't let it get to me fully. It was, it was more so I had to look myself in the mirror and just get serious with life. Do you have a fight coming up? Yeah, uh, January 30th in Tijuana. Oh, you going to Mexico route? Yes, sir. Okay. Any butterflies? No, nah, man. Nah. None whatsoever. What weight is the fight going to be at? Uh, 160. 
160, is that normally what you fight at, or yeah. do you fluctuate? Uh, well, well, my team trying to get me down to 154, you know, but right now it's at 160. Yeah, 154, it's, it's, it's like hot. a minefield, it's loaded, you know? It's hot. 